Hello, everyone. My name is Yuji Sakamoto. I am an associate professor from Hokkaido University, Japan. The title of today's lecture is Introduction to CubeSat Operation and Ground System. This is my information. I was working at Tokyo University for 15 years to develop micro and nano satellites. The satellites were developed under the collaboration with Hokkaido University, and they are dedicated to Earth remote sensing. Now I am working in Hokkaido University, and this collaboration is still continuing. Here is the outline, sorry. Here is the outline of this lecture. Firstly, I'll introduce satellite operations and I'll explain the outline of satellite orbits and mission lifetime. Then I'll talk about fundamental items for satellite operations. They are the communication uh, ground station, launch and the first contact and the mission operations. This lecture is updated version of Kibo Cube live session 2021 satellite operations. If you have watched the previ previous lecture, please watch only the section seven, light data analysis. I will start from the introduction to satellite operations. This is a real photo taken from the International Space Station. Two CubeSats are being released from the deployment container. Please consider what you need to think about for the operation of your satellites. This figure shows a satellite transmitting radio signals and the ground station transmitting signals to a satellite. The satellite rotates around the Earth about 14 to 16 times per day in low Earth orbit. We call it LEO. A single ground station has a contact period of about 20 to 12 minutes, and about four passes are available per day. Please imagine a satellite will come from the horizon. It will pass over your ground station and it will disappear into the horizon. Therefore, data communication time will be total of 40, sorry, 40 to 48 minutes per day. In satellite operations, we send the commands to the satellite from the ground station and receive the telemetry data. Before communication occurs, we need to prepare the mission scenario and the detailed procedure of mission tasks. Satellite cannot be prepared in orbit after the launch. We can only communicate with them to conduct the planned, mission, planned missions, and sometimes we need to solve unexpected, sorry, unexpected problems or troubles. Variations of operation scenarios and procedures need to be considered and tested before the completion of satellite development. This is strongly related to software concept, software concept and design. I emphasize operations are not only a matter of communication. This is relating to other subsystems, including command and then the handling, attitude determination and control, power system, and the thermal design, etc. Okay, uh, section two, satellite orbit and mission lifetime. There are some variations in available satellite orbits. One is geosynchronous orbit. This is used for broadcasting satellites 
or weather satellites, and of course, communication satellites. But for micro and non-satellite developers, low Earth orbit, LEO, is normally selected because there are many launch opportunities and a short distance to ground station. This short distance to Earth has some merits. Communication transmitting power can be decreased and high resolution images can be obtained by a small telescope or camera. Satellites released from the International Space Station have a 400 kilometer height and inclination of 51 degrees. This inclination is the angle from the equatorial plane to the satellite orbit plane. Regions around the Arctic and Antarctica cannot be observed from this ISS orbit. This includes the northern regions of Sweden and Norway's, Norway. Although there are a lot of communication antennas in Ar Arctic regions, sorry, Arctic regions. Also the solar angle to orbit is changing every day. This affects daily observation timing to a specific location. Sometimes it comes only during the daytime but sometimes it concentrate only at nighttime. For ISS release satellites, we need to consider a special heat environment. All sunshine phase continues for a few, day, few days around the summer and the winter. The solar angle to the orbital plane is defined by symbol beta. This beta is constant in sun synchronous orbit, SSO, but for ISS satellites, it is not SSO. It is changing from zero, this zero case, to more than 70 degrees. The left figure shows the case of zero degrees, in this case, the duration of the eclipse phase is maximum. This is eclipse phase. This is sunshine phase. Generally, ISS satellite orbit has a 90 minute period. Sunshine phase is 60 minutes and the eclipse phase is 30 minutes. When this beta angle is increased, the eclipse duration can be zero. The temperature of all the components may converge to a maximum. Please imagine the temperature can be around zero in the cold case, but in the hot case, it can be increased to 40 or 50 degrees Celsius. We must consider this phenomena in thermal analysis and the power system design. I recommend every mission should be suspended in this hot case to decrease the maximum temperature of components inside of the satellite structure. Satellite lifetime deploys, deployed by the ISS is strongly related to atmospheric drag. The height of CubeSats can be decreased by atmospheric drag because the drag force acts in the backward direction. Generally, one new CubeSat can re-enter into the upper, upper, upper atmosphere with less than one year of orbital life. One example is two-unit CubeSat RICO. This was deployed in 2012 and the weight is 2.7 kilograms. Around the 2012, sorry, around the 2012, actually the atmospheric drag was stronger than normal because of be behavior, sorry, because of heavier solar activity. The total lifetime of RICO was 10 months. Compare this with another example of the 52.4 kilograms 
microsatellite Diwata-1, deployed by the ISS in 2016. The dimension is much larger than CubeSat. Also, the weight is 25 times compared to RICO. Around 2016, the solar activity was weak and the lifetime was finally extended to 47 months. This was much longer than we expected before the launch. Important thing is heavier weight satellite have a longer lifetime. Next is section three, communication system. I'll show the introduction to the communication system. Communication system is required for upload, uploading commands from a ground station to a satellite. So this is the ground station side. This is the satellite side. And for downloading housekeeping data and mission data, such as Earth images taken by satellite cameras. These days, there is optical communications, but traditionally, we use radio signal communications. The available frequencies are VHF, around 144 megahertz, and the UHF, 435 megahertz. These are in the range of amateur radio bands, and the satellite must have missions for public amateur radio users and public citizens. Note that S band around 2 gigahertz and X band around 8 gigahertz. They are used for satellites, especially larger than 3U or 6U CubeSats. In both ground stations and satellites, there are receivers, computers, and transmitters. For a command uplink, the operator chooses original command data with the specific actions executed in satellite. Firstly, the data is decoded to a different format and modulated to radio signals. They are transmitted from the ground station antenna. And the signals are received by satellite antenna. It is demodulated in the receiver and decoded to original command data in the onboard computer. On the other hand, for the telemetry data, status or mission data in the onboard computer, sorry, uh, status or mission data is formatted in the satellite and they are transferred to ground station computers in the same manner, a similar manner. Generally, coding and modulating methods are different in uplink and downlink. This photo shows commercial products of satellite receiver and transmitter. Both have dimensions of about eight centimeters in widest and depth to fit for every CubeSat. This is the world first CubeSat Site 4 by the University of Tokyo. This has folding antennas that are deployed in space. Lower frequency bands require longer antenna. The merit in UHF and the VHF signal is in the reasonable prices for the setup of amateur radio ground stations. This makes these frequencies popular with many CubeSat de developers. The merit is the slow data speed, such as 1.2 kilobps and uh, uh, 38.4 kilobps, et cetera. Some satellites can have uh, more than 30 kilobps, uh, but so the one reason for this speed limit is the limited assigned bandwidth. A lot of frequencies are assigned in very squeezed narrow range. And also there are a lot of jamming noises, including illegal transmission signals on the ground. These folded, folded antennas must be automatically deployed just after the deployment from the ISS or other rockets. 
When antennas are not opened, the satellite cannot receive any command signals or cannot send any telemetry data. And in most cases, any mission cannot be executed and end in failure. For S-band and X-band, we can use patch antenna. These frequencies are used for high-speed data communications. Example is uh, 2 megabps by S-band and 20 megabps and more by X-band. Wide band wireless is available, especially for X-band. The demerit is the ground station cost. It requires a large power antenna system. The merit is that no deployable mechanism. So there is low risk of command failure in the beginning of satellite operations. The left of figure shows the bare patch antenna elements. They are assembled with covers and base aluminum plates. Then the unit is attached on top or side panels of the structure. These antennas in the photo are used for GPS receiving and S-band command receiving. When we cannot control the satellite altitude, Omnidirectional antennas will be suitable, but the data rate will be slow because of low antenna gain. To increase the data speed rate, we will choose a high gain antenna, both in the ground station and the satellite. A parabola dish will be used for ground stations with a narrow beam punch antenna sorry, narrow beam patch antenna used for the satellite. The performance of pointing accuracy is required. This reaction, sorry. This is required for ground stations to correctly track the fast moving satellite. It is the same on the satellite side. The satellite must have the function of attitude control and it, it should face toward the ground station during the communication. A power source for transmit transmission amp, amplifier, and the attitude control components will be required. To decide the specs of a communication system, we need to understand the analysis method of link budget. Acceptable data rates such as 10 kilobps, 100 kilobps, uh, 1 megabps, etc., can be calculated by the balance of hardware specs specifications. This technique is explained in a lot of reference books, and this is not a matter only for satellite design. This is very general knowledge for RF communications. Firstly, we need to decide the required hardware specifications for both the satellite and the ground station. The important hardware is antenna, transmitter, and receiver. Antenna size will affect the beam widest. As I explained, narrow beam widest will give fast data communication. By increased output power of the transmitter, faster data speeds will be available, but enough power resources are necessary. Sorry. A well-designed receiver will accept to much lower signal levels. The data modulation type will change the acceptable noise level including FSK, BPSK, QPSK, etc. Communication distance is very important and will have a strong impact on deciding the data rate. This distance is maximized when the satellite is around the horizon and the minimum when the satellite is in maximum elevation. In some cases, 
we will start a slow bit rate around the horizon and switch to fastest after the satellite elevation is increased. Okay, uh, the next is section four, ground station. In this section, uh, I'll talk about the ground station and related components. I already talked about the frequency variations. In general, there are two types of antenna, ground station antennas. The left figure shows a Yagi antenna for VHF and UHF band. And the right figure shows a dish antenna for S-band communications. These antennas are controlled to the direction of satellite position during a 10 minute observation window. They are being moved to follow the estimation direction. Future satellite positions can be calculated. Satellite orbits at reference time are available in the format of two line elements. We call it TLE. This is disturbed, sorry, this is distributed by a public site, celestrack.com, etc. All the space objects are being monitored and their orbits are open to public. This figure shows a satellite position and the ground station location. This is a ground station. This is a satellite. The circle of the satellite indicates the visible area from the satellite. A ground station must be included in the circle for communication. The latitude of CubeSats deployed from the ISS is between about plus minus 51.6 degrees. A ground station for ISS deployed satellites should be located in that region. The best way is to prepare ground stations around the world to increase the amount of mission data. For amateur radio satellites, every country can be accepted for the communication. But for remote sensing or other experimental services, they are only allowed to communicate with the specific countries defined in ITU application. And amateur radio frequencies are not allowed for those purposes. You need to prepare some items for a ground station. Firstly, the antenna itself, and it must have controllable motors. Next, transmitter and receiver in the operation room. They must have the function of suitable modulation and demodulation and the coding and the decoding processors. This is different between amateur radio signals and other signals for remote sensing or technical demonstration satellites. Operation software is important to establish an automatic control system. This is the software for ground station. This is for the satellite. I talk in the later section about the typical operation tasks. You will be very exhausted if you don't have automatic system. Software is supplied by the ma manufacturer of each software, each, each hardware as shown in these screenshots. But typically uh, they will supply only minimum functions. This antenna control software is developed by university including automatic control of the manufacturer software. So this is control the motor and also uh, these manufacturer simple softwares. After the completion of automation, we don't need to care about the antenna control. Every schedule and every pointing control of the antenna, they are managed by the software. Operators can concentrate on the data communication during the observation chances. Telemetry data 
is distributed from the receiver, but it is very bare and raw data. We need to com convert them to the satellite status or image data by individual conversion manners, protocols. So this kind of satellite operation software will be prepared for each satellite. Transceivers for ground stations and operation software are necessary in the system electrical test phase. This is a unit level test, system level test, and flight operations. Demonstration of flight operation scenarios in system tests can improve the operation software and also onboard satellite software. Firstly, in the unit level test, we have not assembled a satellite. Sorry that this is assembled satellite, but only the components are look, put on the table separately in the final, first unit level test. Each electrical component is existing separately in, on the table. We really use different debugging software for each component, including computers, sensors, and payloads. In the next phase, we will proceed to a system level test. We will assemble the satellite. So this is assemble a satellite or connected components by a flight wire harness. I recommend you prepare operation software and the transceivers, transmit and receiver equipment. So they should be set up in electrical test room and RF signals are not used by replacing this with RF cables. So uh, <clears throat> we will have several months or half a year at the most after the handover of the satellite to the start of operation. In lots of cases, we need to concentrate on the satellite development itself before the handover. And we cannot use our time for the preparation of ground station and operation software. Then when use, we can continue to use very simple debugging software for the system level electrical test. After the handover of the satellite, the flight model is not in our position and we cannot improve the onboard software to enable a very effective operation methods, even if we come up with the new ideas. Okay, uh, next is section five, launch and the first contact. Please imagine you complete satellite built and brought it to the space agency to hand it over. I talk about the case when we use the service of ISS Kibo satellite deployment. The satellite should be delivered to JAXA several months before the launch. QSATs are assembled into the JSSOD. It is the it is this frame in the left figure. This is deployable container for multiple CubeSats. After you put the satellite on the table by yourself, then inspectors will check the appearance. After the ceremony, JSS OD, including the CubeSats, they are shipped to the launch site for further integration to the cargo spacecraft. The cargo spacecraft HTV is launched by rocket H2B from Tanegashima Space Center. The cargo spacecraft Cygnus is also available. This is launched from the United States. HTV approaches and docks to the ISS after several days. JSSOD containing CubeSats are handled inside the ISS. CubeSats experience mechanical vibration during this launch. 
The power supply must be turned off at all the time until deployment to space. CubeSats are prepared for deployment by astronaut. JSSOD and the deployment pallet are transferred to outside. I think you can see a CubeSat inside the uh, JSSOD. So it is not fully covered. At least one side is can, can be seen from the outside. They are attached to the tip of the robotic arm on Kibo. Then the astronaut triggers trigger the switch for the deployment. This is a memorial photo when the Philippine microsatellite Diwata 1 was released from the ISS in 2016. Most CubeSats automatically start their functions in space, including RF transmission. We observe the first signals from a satellite at the ground station. This is the most exciting moment. Satellite health is checked, including normal power generation, normal battery charge state, and the moderate temperature of components, etc. These photos are taken at different satellite first contact. This is a release event of the two unit CubeSat RICO, just after deployment into space. RICO started to take a lot of photos without attitude control just after the deployment. In those photos, the ISS was included and the Earth direction was captured. You can see uh, the appearance of clouds in the same in this photo. After the first, tele first telemetry monitor, we need to confirm the successful command uplink. A lot of CubeSats have defects in the command function. So please be careful of the electrical noise environment inside of the satellite. Even if you think the link margin is enough, but finally, if there is strong noises inside the satellite, the receiver cannot find a weak signal from the ground station. We send the commands of camera trigger and the data download and check the first light images. Okay, uh, in this section, I'll talk about the mission operations. Please imagine the timing after the finish of the initial operation phase. We can start the mission to control the attitude and take photos, for example. This is the appearance of our daily operation. We use the satellite control software and upload the parameter or prepare the commands then monitor the status and the downloaded image data. In this operation, we check the result of attitude control pointing to our direction and quickly download the thumbnail image. When everything works well, we can obtain the desired mission image data. The left image was obtained by telescope. The second one is a thumb graphy image of a Typhoon Central. And the third one is a fish eye image. And the right one also imaged by telescope. This can be used for agricultural surveys. I'll show you the functions of satellite control software. In most satellite operations, you will make an original software for status decoding and quick command function. The status window is showing solar power generation, including voltage, current, and power. And power consumption by bus components, battery charge and discharge state, and temperature. And on off state of each component, and there are a quick 
turn on and off buttons. Red alert lamps are important for us. So there, there are no red alarm, alarms in this example, but the uh, uh, red alert alarms are important for us to notice emergency conditions immediately. For quick treatment in emergency cases, uh, this real-time quick commands will help. But I recommend it's better to hide the button for critical functions. Command counters incremented by single command reception, it will be convenient because the command link cannot be stable anytime. Generally, we check the counter after we send a real-time real command. I don't recommend using only real-time commands. I'll introduce a stored command function. This is a kind of task scheduling function. This is important when we want to execute tasks in invisible time. Uploaded commands are not executed instantly, but just stored in the onboard memory. Each command line includes a specific date to execute or waiting time. I recommend a combination of a specific date and waiting time. This is convenient for reusability of the procedure. The first command is this example. The first one is camera on is defined by a specific execution date. The hex value means the command calls and the parameters. The second line is attitude control to a target location. The waiting time after this command is set by three minutes to achieve, to wait the achieve of the uh, achieve maneuver. Then the take a photo command is executed. After five seconds, the camera is turned off. Note that the specific date command is only included in the first line. By changing this date, we can reuse this procedure again in future tasks. We assemble some procedures and fix a specific date by orbit calculations. This text file is converted in uh, full, <coughs> full to hex binaries, including header codes and checksum codes. Then this is uploaded to the satellite. We will prepare a procedure including planned commands, both in visible and invisible time. So this is not only for invisible phase. So this is used for the every time, even if the satellite is visible. So firstly, the upload every command in the uh, first half of the uh, observation pass. Then we just watch the execution result in the uh, same pass from the telemetry status. If the satellite is lost in the visible area in the middle of the procedure, but the procedure can safely be finished, such as turning off a component with high power consumption. If we want to increase the precision of attitude control, we need to survey flight data and compare them with the simulation results. Then update their parameters, such as sensor alignment. This is an example of simulation data of magnetic sensor. The, the upper one is simulation, the lower one is flight data. We often mistake the definition of plus and minus signs, and these kinds of mistakes cannot be excluded you must prepare the update function for every parameters, every alignment matrix, and every control gains, etc. Sometimes every data and attitude control results looks correct only in the data. But after taking the image, we can notice a complete misunderstanding of the direction. The target cannot be included in the photo. So it's better to use actual image data for sensor calibration. 
This is the image of our operation routine. Firstly, we will make operation plans. This is the kind of text file I explained. We will create a new procedure or just assemble the previous procedures by adjusting the first line in specific time. We needed to analyze the orbit and estimate the suitable timing of future tasks. I think this work will consume uh, enormous amount of time and the mission planner will be very exhausted. After finishing command preparations, the upload task will finish in 20 or 30 minutes, including the preparation time. The upload operator does not need to understand the content of upload commands. We can ask some team members to upload the data instead. After the completion of the upload, in the same pass or following passes, the ground station will receive telemetry status, including mission images. This can be manned or unmanned operation. By preparing the automatic receiving system, operators can sleep very well at night and weekends. I emphasize again that this operation planning will consume most of your time. If you can collect a lot of students, I recommend you decrease the workload by your engineering techniques. Okay, uh, this is final section, uh, seven flight data analysis. Some items require the update of onboard computer software. You need to understand them before the handover of the satellite. It is too late just before the operation starts. Satellite operators must check if the satellite status is safe or in trouble. The condition of a satellite is understood by housekeeping data, including voltage, current, and temperature. HK is also including the mode, parameter settings, and attitude measurements and calculations. Important status should repeat in short periods without request any request commands. This, so this is automatically repeated. And detailed status in HK data uh, can be downloaded only when a trigger command is sent. So and the type of detailed status can be switched by commands. CW beacon link with slow data speed is prepared for a low quality communication link in some satellites. This is used for troubleshooting, especially for errors caused by power. The merits of the CW beacon is in being a low power transmitter with minimum computer functions. Power generation by solar cells and uh, charge and discharge the battery and the consumption by bus components, their status are the most important HK. Operators can rapidly notice any issues by an automatic alert when the status value is over the designated safety range. Threshold values for charge stop and the uh, start of suspend mode will be adjusted by, should be adjusted by commands. So normally uh, the voltage of battery and the temperature of battery are being monitored. After several months in operation, uh, these threshold, appropriate threshold values for the power system can be changed. So they should be modified. When you cannot change these threshold values, the operation can be affected by an inconvenient situation. Temperature measurements are important in trouble anomaly detection and update of the thermal analysis model. Please don't forget the existence of the old sunshine phase. 
So in the operation of an ISS deployed satellites, it repeats the sunshine and eclipse phase initially. If you notice a higher temperature that estimated, this is the estimation, this is actual data. You need to prepare for the extreme high temperature in the old sunshine phase. So in old sunshine phase, this temperature will be flat, highest flat. Even in, in this case, the only countermeasure is to turn off most of the inside components to prevent the temperature rising. Some parts of a satellite are thermally insulated and these conductivity, thermal conductivity values can be determined by real temperature measurements. So this is a solar paddle outside and the body mount cells. And this is the external structure and there is inside battery and it can be insulated. This is the temperature examples. The T1 has the a uh, large amplitude, but the T4 can be mostly flat. Okay. It's better to consider in advance which points of temperature uh, should be, it will be required for the detailed thermal analysis model. The onboard attitude computer calculates the attitude and controls it in real time. In the local satellite, the sun sensor, magnet meter, and gyro sensor will be typically attitude, sen attitude sensors. This raw data is input to an attitude con calculation computer, and the current attitude is calculated in real time by using the alignment matrix offset values and sometimes the filtering techniques. By setting the target attitude, the satellite will calculate the required maneuver angles and actuation values for magnetic tokers or uh, reaction values. Finally, from the attitude dynamics, the satellite direction can be changed to an appropriate target direction by repeating this sequence. Grand computer will analyze the road sensor data in HK telemetry and modify the sensor alignment and the control gains by more detailed method. Updated settings will be sent to satellite to refine the performance. For the success of deployment mechanism and attitude control, Image data can be best proof of confirmation. Only sensor data is insufficient evidence. Always the onboard computer will believe its, its result is true, but the real situation can be the inverse direction if the sensor alignment or something else is wrong. You cannot show the attitude precision only by attitude center, sensor data. The image data will be the most clear evidence and also use of the temperature of solar panels or structure temperature can possibly be used as a second proof to understand the solar and arc direction. High resolution images will take a lot of download time. It's better to have the function of thumbnail image generation in onboard computer. Firstly, you download lots of thumbnail image data uh, <clears throat> in a single communication pass. After you recognize which data is good or not, then you can decide to download the full image data in a later communication pass. I recommend a single image file to include the observation time, orbit data of estimation or GPS, attitude data of estimation and target, and also attitude sensor raw data, as well as the original image data. Onboard real-time estimation will use old or simple techniques. 
ground computers can analyze them with more detailed techniques, but this requires the original sensor data. If they are existing in a different file, it is very inconvenient. Not only image data, but this data data, time, orbit, attitude, center, should be included in the image file as metadata. Separated files of the housekeeping status, detail attitude status, and the image data will be difficult and complex to analyze together on the ground. Okay, uh, this is conclusion. CubeSats deployed from the ISS will follow similar orbits at the ISS, firstly, but the uh, uh, altitude can be decreased gradually. So please be careful for the uh, reminder of orbital lifetime. The orbit has different illumination conditions of the sun throughout the year. So the temperature and the power balance can be changed in the seasons. Mission duration of a CubeSat depends on the mechanical characteristics, such as mass and size and the magnitude of solar activity. Link budget between the CubeSat and the ground station uh, shall be carefully designed for steady communications. I emphasize that most important thing is the noise condition inside the satellite. This must be careful, su carefully surveyed and please try to decrease noise as much as, as much as possible. I think a lot of CubeSats ended in failure through a command link malfunction. Through mission planning, ground evaluation, stepwise orbit verification, effect, efficient operational framework are important. So this is a summary of, sorry, this is a summary of section seven. The, sat, the condition of a satellite is understood by housekeeping data, including voltage, current, and temperature. Power generation by solar cells, battery and bus component status, are most important HK. Temperature measurements are important for updating the thermal analysis model. Onboard attitude computer calculations should be updated by detailed analysis on the ground. For the success of deployment mechanism and attitude control, image data can be best proved. Not only image data, the status data, time, orbit, attitude sensor should be included in image files as metadata. I'll finish my talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>